Hi, I'm joined today by Dr Malcolm Brown. Uh, he's a senior lecturer in social science at the University of Southern Queensland. Hi Malcolm, how are hey, you? Hello. <laughs> uh, we'll be talking about religion and society today as part of the Understanding Culture module for AST 1000. So to begin with Malcolm, um, I wanted to ask how does religion influence society? Well, religion often defines society. You look at certain countries, certain nations and ethnic groups, and they're very, very clearly defined by their relationship to a particular religion. So you think of the Tibetan people and um, Buddhism, or the Thai people in a different form of Buddhism, India and Hinduism. There are, there are many, many examples. Um, sometimes this applies when um, many people practice the religion and it influences everyday life um, on all sorts of levels. But even when uh, the practice of the religion, um, the level of practice is quite low, it can still influence aspects of the culture, aspects, um, uh, the country I come from, Scotland, um, is historically Presbyterian. Now, less than 10% of people are actually practicing Presbyterians, but it nevertheless has influenced the culture the economy and um, the way that people behave, um, senses of um, morality, uh, values, um, all sorts of things and this can be the case in any society. Right, oh that's very interesting. Uh, so in terms of religion, a lot of religions have very important r rituals attached to them. So in your opinion how important is ritual to a religion? Well ritual is one of a number of different things that you can find in religion. Um, most religions have some system of beliefs as part of them and in the West we tend to really define religion as a system of beliefs but that's a mistake because um, Christianity which is the religion which most Westerners are most familiar with is really quite kind of heavy on beliefs and um, it probably places more of an emphasis on beliefs than just about any other religion in the world and um, so others place more of an emphasis on practice and um, so if you look at Islam and the word Islam really is a word for the practices that are carried out um, and these are done, and uh, well, some of them are done on a daily um, level, like the prayers five times a day. Others of them might just be once in a lifetime, like the pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. um, but these are practices, and these are practices of a of a ritual sort. Um, now, to, to say that it's a ritual doesn't mean that you just necessarily go through something in an unthinking, repetitive kind of way. Um, but there isn't really. Um, I suppose ritual um, is distinguished from something that's more functional there. Uh, so this can be important, but in a sense, to understand ritual, you need to actually look at the ritual itself. I mean, ritual is, is there sometimes because there are certain things which you can't just explain. Um, using words, using writing, um, talking to, um, talking to you at the moment. Um, so, so ritual sometimes enacts things. It gives you a dramatic um, sense of something um, which you can't simply convey. Uh, sometimes it's a reminder of some historical event, mm. um, like um, Buddhists, for example, will um, mark the birthday of um, the Buddha. Christians do the same um, on Christmas and Easter. You know, they mark historical events. Uh, so some Sometimes it's a reminder. Um, and also a ritual um, to, in a sense, link this with the first question you asked about mm -hmm. society. Um, ritual helps to kind of bind people together in a kind of community. Um, it's something that they do together. Um, some rituals are what we term rites of passage. Mm -hmm. um, so they take you from one stage of life to another. Well, in fact, it might mark your birth or your death, or it might mark your passage from childhood into adulthood, mm -hmm. or from being, um, I suppose, an unbeliever to a believer, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes people go through these rituals on their own, but more commonly they go through these, um, th these rites of passage um, in groups. Um, and this helps them to build up a sense of um, identity with uh, the rest of the people in that group, a sense of community, um, and a sense um, that um, their religious practice is related to the friendships and relationships that they have. So it, in a sense, encourages them to continue. Right. Oh, that's very interesting, because you're looking then at how religion can actually um, 
unite a society, for instance, mm -hmm. through that, that ritual yeah. practice? Um, I mean, traditionally, religion did unite societies. Mm -hmm. Most societies had a religion. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of choosing your religion would have seemed you know, utterly mm -hmm. eccentric. Um, I mean, even today, you can talk about choosing your nationality, but that sounds a bit odd. Um, mm. And once upon a time, it would have been the same with religion. Now, in the modern world, that's really not the case. People do choose their religion. Um, many societies um, do have a dominant religion, like the ones I mentioned, say Thailand, Tibet, India. They have um, majorities, um, but they also have minorities. Uh, so people do can and do choose their religion. And sometimes, if that's managed badly, of course, it can be cause of conflict. Mm. Um, but within the group, within the society or within the community, yeah, the religion itself, the rituals and practices can be a strong uniting mm -hmm. factor. Well, that's fascinating. Um, thank you for coming and talking to us today. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, that's very insightful and I'm sure you've given the students a lot to think about. Thank you. So thank you very much.